Um, let's start with our terminology and some acronyms and terms for a warm-up. So the Security 101. So there are a lot of different acronyms and words there. Maybe not every one of you is uh, common with that. So let's start with CVE. So CVE stands for com Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Um, it's an industry standard. It's a naming convention for for bugs and, or exploits, also for bugs in systems. So only for public uh, known security vulnerabilities. So if you have a zero day and it's in public, so there will not be a CVE for it. And uh, that's an example CV. So it's uh, CV uh, um, dash uh, 2017 for the year and dash and then some numbers. Um, question, do some, someone maybe know what CV this here is for what vulnerability? Um, it's the eternal blue uh, CV for the, exp exp for the bug in the Samba um, protocol. And it was used for WannaCry, and it uh, caused a lot of troubles in uh, May this year. Oh, May last year, 2017. So then the next thing is the CVSS. Uh, it's the Common Vulnerabilities Scoring System. It's, uh, there is a scoring from 0 to 10. So 0 is like nothing really harmful, and 10 is like shut the system down and patch it or throw it away. And it's based on formulas depending on different metrics, and it's a free and open industry standard. Um, RC. Um, RC is standing for remote code execution, uh, so you're able to execute on a remote target your own code or programs. Um, also there is command injection. Uh, you inject your own controlled commands in the, into a system. It could be locally or remotely, so it depends on, on the bug. For example, some uh, command line interface of your local router where you have like a ping command, and uh, there is a common bug often in the, in the past and also in the, in the, in the, in the meantime, that if you, uh, you can also put some um, bash commands in there, and then you can also execute some bash commands on the router instead just instead of just pinging a website. Um, well, then it's also auto-bypass, so authentication bypass. Uh, for example, you can log in without credentials to a website or only with the username, so it depends also on the bug how it, it's executed. And then uh, denial of service. Um, so. The idea behind it is uh, make a system unavailable temporary or permanently. It also depends on the bug. And well, there's also proof of concept. Um, it's normally um, a piece of code which proves that you like uh, um, you, uh, you exploited a bug in a system. And normally, it's it's, uh, it's shared that you really show to the people that there is a bug in a system, and then also the vendors can patch it. And um, normally, there is also um, some norm, um, um, how to say, like a normal way how to show that. Uh, and on Windows, you do like this. You just pop the calculator of Windows, so you pop, uh, pop calc X, X, and with that, you show that you can uh, execute uh, programs on the, on the host. And as the last terminology word is backdoor, uh, it's a built-in method to bypass authentication or encryption of a system. Um, that's like just 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 the terminology. Um, and let's start with the with the first um, security vulnerability, or let's say it like this. So there is there is Cisco. Cisco makes necro equipment and. It has like a long backdoor history with backdoors in, in, in their systems. Um, but the, f the thing is, the positive thing is about they're doing now intern auditing and they're checking their, their software and they're finding a lot of backdoors or, or other bugs, but they do it like internally and so they're doing something against it because sometimes the stuff is like let there during developing and they didn't remove it after releasing the product. So it, it isn't really cool to have some backdoors in a system, but they're actively doing something about that. Uh, the other interesting thing about Cisco is they're very creative in finding synonyms for their backdoors. Uh, there are some examples, like undocumented user account with privilege level 15, so it's like interesting, okay. 
Well, the next one is uh, undocumented static user credentials for a default administ administrative account. It's, well, even better for Vector. But my favorite is from 2014, uh, undocumented test interface. So it was some open port, and you just could connect there, and you could like root access. Um, well, there's another cool vector I found, um, the Tender AC15 vector. So Tender AC15 is some Chinese router, internet Wi-Fi router, and you can get it around 80 euros still. And there's like three easy steps um, how you how you get root access on this on this device. So the first step is uh, you go to slash go form slash telnet on the router IP, and this starts a telnet uh, server. Then the next thing is you choose freely from three existing default accounts on the device that are root accounts. So you can choose from admin, support, and some third account. And yeah. There is, of course, a password, but uh, let's guess what do you think was the password of all accounts? Password. Nope. Yeah. No? Well, I, I will solve password. the. No, the password was uh, like 1234. And um, the guys sent them, yeah, and then you just log in and you profit. <laughs> And the, the thing is, I, th there is the CV link also in the slides, and there is a link to the page of the, of the security team that found the bugs. And they, they said they, they, they reported to the vendor, and the vendor didn't reply or didn't do anything. They reported a second time, did anything. And then, like, the third time, they even reported with, the, with a CV number that, well, guys, what if you do something about that? And still nothing, and in the end, they make like a public disclosure and disclose the whole bug and backdoor in the in the internet. So, well, the '90s called; they want their passwords back. <laughs> um, next thing, 2018 was um, also meltdown on Spectra. It was a beginning news. Um, the thing about this bug is it leads to extraction of sensible data. Um, it's like a design fault in modern CPU architecture. Um, well, it's, I, I state here it's a hardware bug, but it's like a feature of the processors. Uh, it's called speculative execution. And the idea behind is that uh, the CPU also calculates other stuff which it probably could need for the future. And if it don't need it, it throws it later away. Uh, but with this feature, you can, uh, with this bug, get all of this um, probably sensitive data out of the CPU. There are software fixes, but they, uh, you get the performance loss on your CPUs, and you can also really see the performance loss. And also interesting, there's quite new, a new microcode update for some other uh, bug in the Intel CPUs, which they um, give to the people, and there's some interesting uh, stuff in the license terms. They, they tell you, you're not allowed to uh, um, publish uh, performance tests of this patch with your CPUs. It's quite interesting. And also Debian is like now uh, thinking about if they really want to release this, this, this microcode update for their system. Well, next thing is, um, well, a meme. Um, do you maybe know what I'm referring to, which, which tool or Ah, it's close. Electron. Yeah, Electron. So <laughs> you can think about how you like. Uh, so there was uh, Electron RC. Uh, so Electron is a framework for cross-platform uh, cross apps. It's in the end a Chrome browser, which is like modified to load your website and your, your, your features. But the thing is, it's quite easy to use, and you can distribute on a lot of platforms, and it's quite fast to implement something for your apps. So there are also a lot of software based on Electron, like Signal, Wire, Slack, etc. And there is uh, one, uh, there was one exploit. Uh, you could re-enable node integration via XSS. XSS is like uh, cross-site scripting. It's also some attack. And it allowed to execute um, system commands on the on the system. So like there were quite a lot of apps which based on Electron, and every one of them was like possible to uh, execute system commands on your PC. Then, uh, 
you probably are using Steam. There was there was a Steam uh, RC, and this RC existed for 10 years in the client, and it was enough to send a malformed UDP packet to trigger this exploit. Um, there is a extensive write-up about this uh, of this about this exploit, and it's uh, and also the the team team was very fast. They patched this uh, this bug in eight hours after it was reported to them, so they were quite fast and fixed it. But still, it existed ten years in the client, and no one knows if it was ever exploited because they you know no, they don't know that. There is another great thing, uh, the Seagate personal cloud. Uh, there was a command injection. So the Seagate personal cloud is a uh, is a media server for home use with hard disks, um, like a lot of people probably have at home for for their movies and their backups and whatever. And it's running. Uh, you see the snake, so it's running a Python. It's running a Django application. And for the exploit, there was no authentication required, so you just need to be in the network, or it was just you need to have remote access to the device. And there were get parameters um, passed, and there were like unvalidated, unsanitized to to my, there were passed unvalidated, unsanitized to Python modules, and therefore it led to command injection. So and the other thing is, it was it's it was running as root, so you could have like. Uh, run commands, system commands as root on this great device. So you could also exploit this. Well, next, um, Fight Club. So you know this great movie, probably most of the people. Um, do you know uh, in which year this movie was released? No, close. No. Uh, the movie was released 1999, so blast from the past. Um, let's see. CVs, there are also CVs from 1999. Uh, so that's a CV from 1999. Uh, it's uh, Netscape. It um, gained privileges. So there was Netscape Enterprise Server and Netscape Fast Track Server uh, affected. It was a remote tech. And the uh, privileges were gained via HTTP basic out mechanism. And yeah, this is from 1999. Well, um, what could that probably be? It's also some movie. Do you have an idea? Exactly. So, well, let's go back to the future, to 2018. Um, HPE ILO4 out bypass plus RCE. So HPE ILO4 is a remote management console for servers. So it's like a own card where you can uh, rem uh, control the server remotely, like put a new image or whatever, or get access to file system. And uh, the, the CV is from 2017, but it got a Broad public knowledge in 2018 when they presented their work at some conference. I think it was Recon in Brussels, some reverse engineering conference. And it was found by the Airbus research team. So the Airbus has their own research team. And they also invested five man months of work to reverse the whole system, and they found this bug. And yeah, as stated here, it's an authentication bypass, and also in the end leads to some remote code execution. And well, I will show you how this uh, exploit worked. So that's a GIF image from their GitHub repo. So they they curl to the target and it says 401. It's unauthorized. Then they used the great Python tool to print 29 A's. And then they set the header with the keyword connection, get the A's, paste them into the header, and they press enter, and they're logged in as administrator. So you see, uh, exploiting stuff 
aren't so hard sometimes. Um, well, let's go to the next slide. 1999 equals 2018. Well, in math, probably not, but in, uh, in security, yes, because the fault in both, uh, both, ex both bugs was buffer overflow. So it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, you see it's like it was exploited in 1999, it's like a, a program error, and it also occurred 2018, so we see that the same bugs, even 19 years later, still, uh, still are alive and people do them. That's an important thing to, to know and to work on that. Um, who of you uh, know a friend that has some, some IP camera? Okay, quite some people. Um, there was, uh, I found it like, um, also on the, on the database, um, NetWave IP camera denial of service. So you, you just use your browser and use the developer tools of your Firefox, whatever you use, and you just send a post request to the base address, and if, the, it's, it's, if it's a huge body, it just crashes the camera. <laughs> so there is a proof of concept on GitHub. Uh, it's also a CV. And yeah, it's also easy to exploit. Just send a post request, you can make some loop in Python, and the camera is dead. Well, next, let's move to the next target, um, hardware security. Um, so some of you also are driving cars, have a driving license, and there is BMW, uh, and BMWs have uh, in the vehicles from 2012 to 2018, some of them have a telematics control unit, TCU. And uh, there was, there, there, a team found their remote attacks over the cellular network, uh, which led to execution of arbitrary unauthorized diagnostic requests on the CAN bus. So that don't look very well. You don't want to have some that attack surface on your car. There were already in 2016, I think, this great attack on on this one car where they like could like disable the brakes of the car via remote control via the cellular network, and you don't want to have such stuff in your car. Then the next interesting hardware security failure this year was the following. So there's lock picking, lock picking lawyer. It's some guy on Twitter which uh, does lock picking, to, uh, lock picking reviews and so on. And he got this lock from a, from a company. And uh, you see there um, this, uh, this screw with, with red line around. I mean, I don't have, I don't have the, the screw with me. I don't, I don't have the, 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 the lock with me, but I have the, the equipment with me for that, so. I could fix it later. <laughs> and um, so the, the best thing is the, the money quote from the vendor. So it says, the lock is invincible to the people who do not have a screwdriver. <laughs> I mean, like, it's easy to get a screwdriver or, or you even carry it with you. So that's a really good quote of them. Um, all right, there is uh, another well, funny or obscure story. So let's combine the words mining rigs, data center, 600, and Iceland. So if you combine these words together, you will get this. So someone stole in Iceland 600 mining rigs out of a data center. Iceland is an island with water around, and no one knows where these mining rigs are, so they just disappeared. So, I mean, you, you can't make this story up, like having 600 mining rigs in a data center and they just disappear, what the fuck? <laughs> so that's like really obscure, 
But, um, well, I have a bonus for you, for the story. I mean, you, you, it's all already really, really, uh, really, really strange a story and curious, but I have a really good bonus cont uh, content. So, um, they, they got a person which is a suspect that he was like the mastermind behind this whole story. And also, like, they got him and they put him into jail. And then uh, this happened. Well, the sus suspect escaped the prison via a window, and he flew a via plane to Sweden. And in this plane, there was all the prime minister in there. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's like okay, you can do that. Um, yeah, so. He traveled under a passport with some, uh, someone else's name, and they discovered via the surveillance video, and they also saw that he's not in the in the jail anymore. Okay, can also happen, but I mean the the the, the, the two stories uh, are quite funny together. Well, uh, I have uh, another funny story. Um, it's like the last of last of uh, security failure that I present you. It's um, so if you have sound and you have hard disks, it uh, will lead to death of hard disks probably if you have bad luck. So there was a uh, in it's in Sweden, yes, that's in Sweden a data center and. They have a gas-based uh, fire suppression system, so if there is like a fire in a data center, it starts and uh, the gas getting released at high speed and it, it should uh, like um, kill the fire and everything should be fine. But when you like uh, release this gas with high speed, it, uh, it will cause some uh, high sound. And this high sound uh, can destroy hard disks. And this happened uh, at, at, at the security incident. So, and the other, the other the fun thing was that this um, this uh, gas release um, fire alarm thing was caused by an accident. So there wasn't even a fire there. So that's also a side note for the story. Um, well, there were, were uh, some problems. The first one was uh, there weren't not enough servers in Sweden that they could like uh, replace the stuff, so they had to import more servers from from the other countries to get the stuff running again. Um, so the Nasdaq is a stock exchange from America, which has all their servers in this data center, and they rented some space there. And normally they start at nine o'clock in the morning with, with their work. But in this case, well, it didn't work because the hard disks were destroyed and they didn't have enough servers to replace them and all this stuff. In the end, uh, they were like for five hours not operational. It's quite a lot of um, outage time. Uh, there were affected markets, so including uh, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and the three Baltic states were all affected by this downtime. And yeah, uh, there is also a link in, in, in this slide. Um, it's um, a YouTube video. Uh, it's some guy from Romania um, standing in a data center. And well, the video is called Shouting in a Data Center. Uh, he has uh, monitoring for the hard drives. And then he goes to his hard drive racks and he just screams at the hard drives. And then you really see on the monitoring how the I.O. drops, and it's like really funny to see, but also really scary to see how you can destroy hard drives just at screaming, screaming at them. Maybe a new hobby for some people. Yes, new side channel attack. I mean, you see it's somehow not very hard to get into the data center if you can like uh, steal 600 mining rigs in a data center. So why don't go get there and scream at hard disks? <laughs> um, so uh, there is one question I I ask myself, or I, I think some people will will ask themselves: Why should I care about all these security 
security failures and, and exploits and bugs in, in the systems. And my, my uh, answer for this is like that security problems affect us all in some way. Uh, you can have yourself your device, like I have an Intel CPU in my computer and it has bugs. Maybe I use some software which has some bugs for, for my local website, like I use some CMS system which has some exploits in there. Or, or even my, my best friend has some IP camera which uh, getting uh, part of a botnet or something like this. So in the end, security problems are real. They are affecting all of us. And uh, my proposal for that is that it should be our, our goal to make the world a safer place. So um, I propose that um, people um, watch out what's out there and they should tell the people that security matters and that security is not just uh, some, some, some buzzword and no one cares because in the end you see there are a lot of stuff what happened and it's, it, first of all it could cause a lot of money loss in, for companies, it could also loss of privacy data of people and um, yeah, I said it's, it should be a goal of, of us all to, to work on the goal to make the world a safer place. So I think um, you had a lot of fun until now. Uh, so get some popcorn, take your time. And if you got curious about all this security view, uh, there, is, there is the CV database where I get a lot of, of the CVs. Um, it's, you can find it on cvdetails.com. Uh, it's very funny and interesting. You find very obscure CVs like some command injection in, in, in Minecraft servers, if you play Minecraft, um, or some, some draft perverse, uh, uh, path traversal uh, ex bug for some wash machines. There are also wash machines which are like on the internet or in your local network. And so it's, 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 it's really interesting to, to check out uh, all the CVs and, uh, and sometimes it's like time to go and cry, but sometimes it's just okay, oh well. But in the end, it should remind us all that there are, there are security problems out there and we should work on it that they're getting less and less. So first of all, thanks for uh, the attendance. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, do you have questions? I just saw a comment uh, regarding the HDDs and sounds. Of my friends, the data center, they had the service and had a bit of a fire alarm, so it, the fire suppression system went off. And uh, the actual uh, AGDs stopped responding uh, to SATA commands and he was like, oh shit, our servers died, all the disks are dead, but after restart everything went back to normal, but that was a good scare for them and a good lesson to never rely on one single physical location for all the hardware and infrastructure needs. Yeah, that's like, they learned something of it, like uh, redundancy matters sometimes, especially for data centers. And uh, yeah, it's, it's also because of vibrations and like if, if hard disks are vibrating and they're vibrating more, you just destroy the plates and they're just broken. So probably also maybe in the future we will just replace all the hard drives with SSDs or stuff like this, maybe if the technology gets better. But in the meantime, a lot of, uh, a lot of Technology still uh, uses hard drives because there are a lot of uh, memory and you just can get it cheap. So, another question? Oh, well then, uh, thank you very much. Um, stay safe and patch your systems, if there are patches out for that. Sometimes they aren't. Sometimes you just, you just can throw them away and buy better stuff. It's also a problem, so... There should also be some like 
uh, regula regulations that like vendors should be like liable for the stuff and uh, like at least tell the customer how long they will get like patch support or stuff like this. That think it that should be a good goal that you make the vendor liable for their uh, security and if they don't do that, they should get like some penalties or whatever. Because if I buy a camera and it's like I pay like 30 or 50 euro or even 100 euros and then there's some big security vulnerability and they don't want to patch it or it's or I don't even have a, a clue where to get the patches or how to patch it, it's like you can just throw it away because normally people even don't know how to like sep put in a separate network or whatever. And that's a pity because you just throw it away 100 euros more or less. Um, so, um, if you want to contact me, uh, you have, I have metrics, you can, you can write me on metrics, uh, I have Mastodon, you can write me on Mastodon on the Twitter, and if you want to write me an email, you can write at camppp18 at cyber.coffee, or just come by today or tomorrow or on Sunday and we can talk about different topics, exchange, and so on. And there's a, a last... Um, Thing. I have a event announcement. So, yeah, I will also I will also put the slides online. Uh, we will probably get it from the Farplan app as soon as possible. Um, so um, there is a great conference from our Serbian friends. It's called Balkon. It's now the sixth time. It's in Serbia, in Belgrade. It's in from the 14th to the 16th of September. It's in Novi Sad in Serbia. It's like one hour away from Belgrade. Um, come there and bring friends. It's a great conference. Um, they're investing a lot of time and uh, they, they, they're managing every time to make every year a better conference. Um, and their, their like big brother or big sister is the Chaos Communication Congress. So that's like they want to become like this. And, and now it's like a really small small CCC with a, conf a lot of a lot of interesting people and you can exchange with them and it's around 200 to 300 people there and so if you if you like come by it's it's a, it's also a cheap conference for most of the people because like a normal ticket costs 24 euros and 12 for students i will be also there with this talk and i will also improve it for more content and well enjoy the camp uh, thanks for being here and well see you later <laughs>